jersey's nice and laid out with your pants, you know, so you kind of feel good when you see that laying there. And then you just go get tape, and after you're done taping, you just put your equipment on, and people have headphones, and you just you drop a needle or a pin in a haystack, and then you'd hear it. I mean, it was just, you just feel the intensity. It just builds and builds and builds. By the time 7 o'clock comes around, it's all crazy. Y'all ready for this? Eastern Savages traveled to Stephenville, Texas to open their 1994 season against the Texans of Tarleton State University. The Savage offense showed not only its quick strike ability, but its versatility as well as six different Savages put points on the board. The Savage defense, led by senior linebackers Brian Hamilton and Jonathan Polson, showed it was going to be a powerful unit also, as they limited the Texans to only 84 yards rushing. Tarleton went to the air to make the game close in the second half, but a touchdown pass from Southeastern sophomore quarterback Jeff Mosier to senior tight end Christian Pichel secured the Savages' 36-22 victory to begin the season 1-0. Thank you. 
Savages at home for the first time as they hosted the Arkansas Tech Wonder Boys. Senior tailback Ernest Hunter captured the first of his five Oklahoma Intercollegiate Conference Player of the Week honors by tying a school record with four touchdowns and gaining over 240 yards. The Savage defense proved strong once again as cornerback John Delellis and linebacker Ellis Howard came up with big games and the defense held Arkansas Tech to only four yards rushing and under 200 yards of total offense as the Savages pushed their record to 2-0 with a 42-27 victory. four found the Savages at home once again to meet the Bison of Harding University. The Savages struggled early against the Bison's strong defense and high-powered offense and fell behind 10 to nothing early in the first half. But the momentum began to turn Southeastern's way after the Bisons were called for a personal foul on Junior Day's punt return. Southeastern went on to take the lead by scoring 13 unanswered points. Southeastern built a seven-point lead late in the fourth quarter but with 43 seconds remaining, Harding scored to cut the Savage lead to one point. The Savage defense held firm on the two-point conversion attempt, and the Savages improved to 3-0 on the season with a 30-29 victory. Defensive back David Garza, who had three interceptions, was named the OIC's Defensive Player of the Week.
savages loaded the bus and headed for Magnolia, Arkansas to meet the mule riders of Southern Arkansas University. The savages jumped ahead early and never fell behind as they captured their fourth straight victory of the season to become the last unbeaten team in the OIC. Once again, Ernest Hunter dominated the action as he carried the ball for 292 yards and two touchdowns. Strong defense over the final minute of the quarter kept the mule riders out of the end zone and preserved the Savages' 24-17 victory. Savages took their perfect 4-0 record to Arkadelphia, Arkansas to meet the Tigers of Washita Baptist University. The Savages fell behind early as the offense struggled on the wet field, but the defense scored its first touchdown of the season when Orlando Guidry intercepted a deflected pass and took it into the end zone. The wet field had an effect on both teams throughout the game, but it was penalties that were the Savages' biggest problem. Penalties that wiped out two Savage touchdowns and a fumble inside the Tigers' five-yard line with under a minute to play cost the Savages dearly as they suffered their first defeat of the season, 19-16. not only homecoming at Southeastern, it was also the beginning of the conference season for the Savages as they played host to the nation's third-ranked Langston Lions in a battle of OIC championship contenders. An offensive explosion early in the second quarter put the Lions ahead, but the Savages were able to pull within six points just before halftime on a touchdown pass from Jeff Mosier to senior wide receiver Eric Knight. In the second half, the Savages all but abandoned their ground attack and went strictly with Mosier's hot right arm. Early in the third quarter, Mosier found Pete Spratt for a 61-yard touchdown to give the Savages their first lead. Langston regained the lead on their next possession, but the crucial extra point was blocked by Southeastern's Roland Jackson. Senior place kicker Phil Cobb connected on a 32-yard third-quarter field goal to pull the Savages within two, then nailed the game-winning 45-yarder with just over seven minutes to play. Roland Jackson came up with his second big defensive play of the game as he intercepted an Ed Daniels pass to secure the Savages' 26-25 victory. Mosier, who threw for three touchdowns and 255 yards, was named the OIC's Offensive Player of the Week.
time in two weeks, the 1994 season saw the NAIA's third-ranked team travel to meet the fifth-ranked team as Week 8 found the Savages in Tahlequah to meet the Redmen of Northeastern State University. This week, however, was not the Savages' week. The Savage offense struggled through the first half, turning the ball over three times and falling behind 24 to nothing. The Savages regrouped at halftime and scored the first 13 points in the second half and were on the verge of scoring their third straight touchdown when the turnover plague returned. Northeastern scored again in the final two minutes to secure a 31-13 victory and drop the Savages to 5-2 on the season. victories to have a shot at the conference championship, the Savages played host to the Southwestern Bulldogs on week nine. The game took on the look of a track meet in the first quarter as both teams combined to score 27 points. But a defensive second quarter, in which the only scoring was a Bulldog field goal, left the Savages down by two at halftime. The second half showed the explosiveness of the Savage offense and the toughness of the defense. The offense rallied for 10 points, and David Garza intercepted a pass and returned it for a touchdown to close out the scoring. A 52-yard touchdown run by Ernest Hunter broke open a close game, and the Savages cruised to a 31-16 victory. Hunter captured OIC Player of the Week honors for the third time, and the Savages improved to 6-2 on the season in 2-1 in conference play.
moving up in the national rankings to the number four position, Southeastern hosted the Northwestern Rangers on week number 10. The Rangers entered the game with a 1-7 record, but proved no game in the OIC is easy by hanging with the Savages throughout the contest. Phil Cobb connected on 26 and 42 yard field goal attempts on the Savages' first two possessions, but Southeastern could not get anything going the rest of the half and trailed 10 to 6 at the break. An 80 yard drive by the Savages early in the fourth quarter put Southeastern ahead, but the Rangers went back in front with 4.23 to play on an interception return for a touchdown. The Savages' final chance for victory began at their own 39 yard line with only 1 minute and 43 seconds to play. 46-yard screen pass to Ernest Hunter set the Savages up for some last-minute heroics, but the Savages came up empty on their first three tries from the Ranger 25. On fourth down, with 39 seconds to play, Jeff Moser finally found Pete Spratt breaking into the end zone for a touchdown that secured the Savages' 20-17 victory and kept the Savages atop the OIC standings with a 3-1 conference record. Traveling Trophy was up for grabs during week 11 as the Savages traveled to Ada to meet the East Central Tigers. The Savages needed a victory to assure themselves a tie for the conference championship and win they did behind the tremendous running of Ernest Hunter, who, in his last regular season game as a Savage, posted a single game OIC record 336 yards to finish the season with 1,899 yards, a total which not only broke the conference record for most yards in a season, it also surpassed the NAIA national record for most rushing yards in the season. Southeastern grabbed the lead early in the first half and never gave it up as they were able to respond to every Tiger score with one of their own. The 33-27 victory improved the Savages' record to 8-2 and, and made 1994 a championship season. Thank <laughs> you. 